الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعظم الله وأجرنا وأجركم بمصابنا أبي عبد الله الحسين Our dear viewers from across the world We send our deepest condolences to each and every one of you And indeed to our dear awaited Savior May Allah hasten his reappearance Upon the ten days of mourning Of commemoration, of lamentation For the death, for the tragedy, for the murder upon our holy third Imam, the son of Ali al-Murtada and Fatima al-Zahra, Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad and we welcome you to Verses of Love, a nightly show for you during these days of commemoration whereby we'll encapsulate and derive some of the very basic learnings from the tragedy yet university of Karbala which we can, live, which we can learn from and we'll cover these together with verses of love, poetic recitations, not to make you cry, rather to make you connect with Imam al Hussein and his dear household. And I'm happy to be joined by my dear brother, Ali Fadl. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, Abba Abdullah. Wa ala al arwah al lati hallat bi finaik. Alaikum minni, salamu Allah. Abadan ma baqit. Wa baqi al laylu wa al nahar. Wa la ja'alahu Allah. Akhir al ahdi minni li ziyaratikum. Peace be upon Hussein and upon Ali, the son of Hussein, and upon the children of Hussein and upon the companions of Hussein. And echoing the words of my dear brother Sadiq as we are remembering and commemorating and essentially connecting with Imam al Hussein and the tragedy of Karbala during these next um, 10 shows or these 10 episodes of Verses of Love. We named it Verses of Love because we are uh, aiming to bring you closer to Imam Hussein salam, or connect to Imam Hussein salam, through the art of poetry and recitations inshallah and to open up today's um, show um, we are open as, as you've probably seen tonight um, the flag on the dome of Imam Hussein has, salam, just, has just been changed signaling the start uh, of the month of Muharram the month of mourning uh, for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. It go, the, the flag is uh, from red to black mm -hmm. and it stays black for I believe two, two months or so until mm -hmm. after the Arba'een. Um, so in light of, in light of this, the, 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 the changing of the flag and the advent of this new month, of the month of mourning, um, I have a poem in regards to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And there is actually a special um, context to this because we know from, uh, if we go back in history, the call of Ibrahim mm -hmm. alayhi the, the the Prophet Ibrahim, he was ordered to make a call before the advent of Hajj, mm. or the, the procession of Hajj. He was ordered to make a call, but when he asked his Lord, look, there's, there's no one here in front of me, who mm. do I make this call to? Yeah, to Allah okay. subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, if you make this call and do what is obligatory on you, we will make sure that this call reaches the men and the women for centuries to come. Absolutely. And that's why we see today the people, the, 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 you know, the, the, the millions of people, the millions of hujjaj that visit, um, that uh, perform the, the hajj pilgrimage. They answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Similarly to this, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, when we hear the stories of him making a call, hal min nasrin yansurana. Mm. Is there anyone out there to help us? This call isn't, to those directly in front of him. Because we know from the, from, from the historians that there wasn't anyone out there to help him physically. But this call was a call that transcended time and space to reach us today. So that every year, year upon year, we say, yes, I am that person to answer the call. And inshallah, we'll touch upon more of that inshallah, um, later inshallah. on the show. But the, the poet Nura Sada says, it was not just a day witnessed by your eyes, by your eyes. Millions witness your day. So hear their cries, hear their cries. Hussein, you are not alone. Hussein, you are not alone. Your pain to millions is shown. Millions witness your day. So hear their cries, hear their cries. Between your eyelid and eye. Drawn in every tear you'd cry You'd stand alone asking for help 
And did you ever ask why? Calamities you witnessed Left our own eyes so distressed That we'd cry as if horses' hooves Were on our, were on our own father's press You stood alone on that day Every love taken away When alone you spoke to your Lord Behind you we'd come and pray Yes, a thousand years have passed Ten thousand years it was For it lives with our memory As if of yesterday's past As if of yesterday's past They spoke of you as if you died and your plight, and your plight, instead you brought our souls to life. With your light, with your light, your pain is not yours to own. Your pain is not yours to own. Your pain to millions is shown. Millions witness your day. So hear their cries, hear their cries. You know, the words of that are so profound in that just today I saw even a Muharram poster from South Africa. Yeah. And I, every single year, without doubt, there's another country, there's another country, like, are there Shias there? Mm. Yet the remembrance of Imam Hussein goes from Iraq to Iran, to this country, to that country. You Non-stop. know, the heavens, mm. every single entity in this world remembers Abu Abdullah al Hussein, so long as they have that light to see him. Inshallah. And inshallah, may, may, long may it continue. And I think one of the big themes that we want to bring to you, our dear viewers, across these 10 nights is twofold on the one side basic learnings and on the other is remembrance of specific personality so inshallah today for this night the main theme will be focusing on imam al hussein alayhi salam leaving medina and leaving everything that comes with medina medina mm. was not just a city it wasn't just an area it wasn't just for him an area where islam was one it was his home mm. and, and we forget that and we'll touch upon that later inshallah yeah. Yeah. and further to this from the lessons that we wish to take home, it's that another Muharram has arrived. And long may we see these for the rest of our lives, 90 years, 100 years, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us. But how can we ensure that this Muharram is not just going to be another 10 days of wearing black, not wearing perfume, coming to the masjid or not going to the masjid, whatever it may be, how are we going to ensure that there's a little bit more behind it? And we'll touch on this throughout the show. And I guess just one very easy point to take away that if I were to ask you, whoever you are, an older man, a younger man, an older lady, a younger lady, what were you doing on 12th of July last year? Majority of us, unless it's your birthday, no idea, right? No idea. But if I were to ask you, what were you doing in Muharram 2016? We'll have a rough idea. I was attending this majlis, this center, or I flew to this place, whatever. It starts to trigger memories. You're like, okay, actually, I do remember. I went to this center. I remember we had dinner at this person's house, and then we went to the mentionist. And yeah, I remember work the next day went a bit like this. And all of a sudden, you start to trigger these memories, and you can start to remember what you were like a year ago. And Muharram, even if it serves nothing for you except this, then let it be so. If it serves nothing, if you have no connection with Imam Hussein, if you have no connection with the religion, and all you are is someone who just hears of a friend mm. that goes to these regular majalis, so they go to these centers for 10 days, then keep Muharram as the most simplistic thing, which is a timestamp. Yeah. Let it be that reflection for you to say, Actually, yeah, this time last year, maybe I wasn't as kind as I was this year. Maybe I wasn't as introspective as I am this year. Let it serve the most simple purpose for you as a timestamp. And if that's just one lesson you take away, then let it be that. But if you can, let Muharram be a little bit more. Let it be a mirror. Let it be a reflection upon yourself to say, actually, 
this slogan of Ya Hussein that I'm sure the many in the in Karbala today would have been chanting as that flag was changed and we always see the videos in it. It gets us pounding, but does it get us pounding because it's just like a football stadium and you just get you know absorbed by the noise? Or is there a little bit more behind seeing that calligraphy of Ya Hussein written? Is there more oomph behind it? Is there more of a actually this Husseini message is not just a slogan that comes off my tongue, it's something I live by, it's something I dictate my decisions by, it's something that my family revolves around. Mm. And if I were to use that timestamp that we spoke about, is Ya Hussein, and when I say it in the Majlis, has it graduated from being Ya Hussein to now actually being, yes, a slightly longer prayer? Yes, a slightly wrong a start in reciting Quran. Yes, a way in which I can start forgiving someone like Imam al-Hussein forgave Hur. And this is why we always hear that Karbala and this tragedy of Karbala is a university of knowledge for us. Mm. And inshallah, we can graduate from it. Just mm. two very simple lessons, inshallah, to take away. Yeah, brilliant. There's no doubt that with the month of Muharram now being here and whilst people start to hear that, okay, you're going to this majlis again, 10 nights commemoration, you'll be challenged. You'll be challenged as to what's the point? What's the significance? And I think a very simple hadith that you can give to them or that you can have reflecting in your head is this. It comes from our holy prophet, may Allah bless him and his holy household, where he says, train your children in three things. The love of your prophet, the love of his progeny, i.e. Ahl bayt and the recitation of the Qur'an. And in our majalis, these, th these three things are present. These three things are definitely present. And for sure, these three things were present in an area known as Medina too. And I think when we try to understand this tragedy of Karbala, there's more to it than just a great man being killed without water. Yes, this is a tragedy in itself, but there's more to it. And if we just go right back to the beginning of it, whereby we have a man who's leaving a city. Regardless of this man, this is someone who's not just leaving a city, he's leaving a home. And I ask you this, when you've traveled, be it for work, university, whatever it is, and you go even to the luxury of a hotel, you still feel a little bit uneasy. You're not sleeping in the same bed as you usually do. You're not in the same environment. You don't know where you can go and get X, Y, and Z easily. You're in a foreign place. Now imagine you didn't have the luxury of a hotel. You didn't have the luxury of flying by plane and having taxis. Rather, you're traveling with women and children. You're making this journey. This absence from a home is one thing. But for Imam al Hussein, this absence was one where he was leaving the city of Medina, a city where this religion has so much history, so much honor, oh. so many memories. We forget that Imam al Hussein was indeed, he was, he was a human. He had feelings. He was there, he was brought up there, he was born there. He saw things change, he saw, he saw the religion go through different waves. He saw his grandfather, he used to play on his grandfather's back. He saw so much of his life in the city. And inshallah, just now, we'd like to reflect and try and understand on what this concept of leaving a city, but leaving a home and leaving a home like Medina. Yeah, so as, as you were saying, in terms of him leaving Medina, there's so many personal connections he has with the city. There's so many religious connections he has mm. with the city. But of course, he's on a mission. And with this mission, there are sacrifices. And the sacrifices that he has to leave his home in order to make this stand. Um, leaving people behind were also difficult, we'll allude to who he left behind as well and the Masaib associated with that. But essentially when he leaves, he goes towards the grave of his grandfather as a final goodbye. Mm. And he says, goodbyes, goodbyes they've, they've said, our best unsaid. Silent I leave, O oh Muhammad. They say, speak words to who you love and bid farewell in your silence. So at your grave, silent I stand, left torn apart by your absence. For you, Bedr and Uhud, they seek my blood. 
for your Badr and your Uhud. They seek my blood for their vengeance. I see my death before my eyes, and with it smell heaven's fragrance. Not who I am, for who I am. This is very significant, by the way. Not, not what I am, for who I am. To battle your beloved is led silence I leave, Muhammad. And of course, Imam Hussein being the grandson of the Prophet and, and the poem also alluded to the fact that there's Badr and Uhud and, and it, it's more of like a, almost a revenge uh, mission against Imam Hussein. So it says, not, not what I am for who I am. To battle your beloved is led silence I leave, I leave O Muhammad. I stand with it beside your grave and scatter upon its roses these roses beside your grave shall grow whilst your beloved death approaches O oh grandfather when they blossom your beloved Karbala reaches and the day they wither away your beloved's head a spear raises as each rose grows, grows your sorrows Till to death's hand Hussein is fed Silent I leave, O oh Muhammad Silent I leave, O oh Muhammad Many thanks to the poet Nuri Sardar And with that inshallah We will go on after the break To the masaib of Imam al Hussein Leaving certain family members from the holy city of Medina Knowing that he will not return to them until he meets them in the hereafter. Join us after the break, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa Rahim, welcome back to Verses of Love here on Imam Hussein TV. And on this first night, on this first show, we're exploring the theme of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and indeed his family and his companions leaving the city of Medina, a very holy city in the eyes of Islam and indeed a home for Imam Hussein. And we've been talking about how to maximize these nights as well, how to ensure that these 10 nights don't just go past, that you can actually take them by the scruff of the neck and really start to engage with them and start to engage with Imam al Hussein. So inshallah for this part of the show we'll be focusing on the goodbyes, the goodbyes that Imam Hussein had to do, the goodbyes that Imam Hussein had to deliver to his dear mother, to mm. his dear brother, to his dear grandfather, to his dear home. Mm. And even if we look initially to so that of his brother, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. You see, Imam Hussein, having grown up in this city, had seen enjoyment but tragedy as well. He had seen almost all of his family members that had passed away go through some sort of ordeal, some sort of tragedy. And he already knew about what was going to come for him, yet he saw all of these tragedies. And in Medina, he sees his brother, his older brother, our holy second Imam, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam go through such a tragedy whereby he's poisoned to the extent that he regurgitates his liver. Now usually this line is delivered in Masai when emotion is very high, but I want to be very rational here. This is a man who has been poisoned to the extent that his liver is regurgitated. And you have a younger brother in Imam Hussain alayhi salam seeing his brother in such Pain isn't even the word, such agony, such indescribable pain. But the Masaib of Ahlul Bayt is such that it doesn't even end there for them. And when we say that one who goes through such a tragedy, we always say at least they can be washed and they can be covered and they can be taken to their grave in peace. And that is the case for a lot of the A'imma yet we know for Imam Hussain this isn't the case, but even if Imam al Hassan, having had his body washed, prepared for the grave, his kafan wrapped, even at that point, 
as they're taking this out, Imam Hussein witnesses arrows going into the body of his brother's coffin to the extent that the coffin of Al Hassan has to turn around and be rewashed. Now imagine that to your older brother, having seen the pain he's been through. So now Imam Al Hussein has to give his farewell to Imam Al Hassan. And there's a very beautiful line that Imam Al Hassan says to Imam Hussein as his younger brother. Upon his final words, where he says, Oh Hussein, la yomaka yomaka Aba Abda. There is no day like your day, O oh Aba Abda. Despite Imam al Hussein, and be rational again, despite having seen his brother go through that torment and knowing he would have to see his coffin go back and then return, he still says, Oh Hussein, there will be no day like yours. It's a reminder for what's to come. And Imam al Hussein has to bid farewell to this, to his older brother. Knowing that his older brother will give his son Al Qasim to come and defend him. Mm. A 13 year old, 14 year old teenager. But it doesn't stop there. Imam Al Hussein's departure goes further. And then he goes to the Holy Prophet's grave. And this in itself is a 20 part series of lectures that can keep on going. But the crux of it is this it's that if Rasulullah was there with Imam Al Hussein, there is a chance that they would not have laid a finger upon Imam al Hussein. Yet, just for the absence of a soul, the naivety and the pride and the arrogance of such individuals in that they think they can say, we follow the message of Rasulullah, we pray, we read the Qur'an that he revealed unto us, yet we slaughter his grandson in a land where his women and children have to look on. And I have no idea what the conversation was when Imam al Hussein went to bid his farewell. Many poets describe it. And again, I ask you to look at it very rationally how Imam al Hussein may have complained to Rasulullah about what was to come of him. And that's a second goodbye. But a third one that really strikes the heart is that of a son saying goodbye to a mother. Mm. That of Imam al Hussein saying goodbye. To Fatima to Zahra, sallallahu alayhi Having seen the torment she went through. Having seen the torment she went through. He now has to leave the unknown located grave of her mother and complain to her. And I ask you this, when a son is in grief and is worried and is scared, for those of you whose mothers are still alive, what would you do in a moment of fear? You'd go and embrace your mother. You'd go and ask her for comfort. It's one person that is as close to being the most merciful to God that is on this earth is your mother. I ask you, what could have been the conversation of Imam al-Hussein to his mother? That fear, yet that trust in Allah that she instilled within him. But one thing that we pray and we hope for sure as well is that during those moments where Imam al Hussein is being tested with a test that no others will have ever seen nor will ever see that Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam would have been with him during that tribulation on the sand of Karbala holding him close and keeping him steady yeah and following on from that as well where there is a narration that states that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he was with his daughter Fatim Zahra and it was seen that they were having a, a very private conversation and during this conversation he, he, we, it, it was narrated that Fatim Zahra was crying and then she was smiling mm. and then when she was asked or when the Prophet was asked what, may, what, what was it that you said to your daughter that made her, that made her cry or was very emotional and then made her smile he said to her, or he said to the companions, he said, what I told, him, what I told her was that her son Hussein will be slain on the, the lands of Karbala. Um, and I told, he, I told her the whole story of Karbala and the tragedy of Muharram and, and, and what will happen to him and his children, his companions and, and, and uh, Sayyidah Zainab. Um, and therefore she got emotional and started to cry. But then she said, and then he said uh, that after that I told Fatim Zahra, that although this calamity will befall your son Hussein, there will be a nation that will uphold the tragedy of Imam Hussein, the tragedy of your son, year 
in, year out, so that the name of your son Hussein will always live on through time and space. And also following on from that, we also know that the narrations that state that in every single majlis, the same way that Fatima Zahra was present in Karbala, mm -hmm. was with Imam Hussein, she is also present within the majalis of Imam Hussein Ahsan. Salam, and Aba Abdullah. But um, for the poetry, it depicts how Fatima Zahra Salam, came towards Karbala during the massacre of her son Hussein. It said, Zainab cries a scream of death by God a scream. She cries, oh mother, come and see your Hussein. Mother, I wish that to my side you'd return. And then Fatima from the heaven appears. Opposite her Hussein severed body lies. She wails when this picture meets her two eyes. With her the moon, the stars and everything cries. She cries Rise up and avenge him, Haidar. Then she finds the body of the newly wed. To the hunger of the swords, Qasim was fed. And upon him, tears of blood, our mother shed. Which heart can bear the weight of this? picture then she finds abbas in this dreadful place oh abbas where is your beauty and your grace with his two severed hands she strikes her face abbas rise up and comfort your mother abbas rise up and comfort your mother uh, on this note, many thanks to the poet Nuri Sarda for the poem. On that note as well, as we are mentioning the saying a goodbye to the loved ones, those loved ones, as you mentioned, had passed away by the time Imam Hussain mm -hmm. was saying his goodbye. So in a certain way, it was a bit easier than saying goodbye to a loved one who was alive Absence. and living and in front. Not mm -hmm. only is it a bit easier to say good goodbye to a loved one, who passed away, or actually not only is it difficult to say goodbye to a loved one who's around, but it's difficult to say goodbye to a loved one who happened to be your daughter, Allah number Allah. one, who had happened to also be sick mm. and ill mm. from an illness, and also a young girl, on top of that, a young, um, uh, a young girl who'd be alone in Medina. Mm. Mm. So for that, it must have been a difficult difficult situation from our Hussain who had to make a decision. Now this girl, if I bring her with me, can she, can she survive the whole journey, however long it may be towards what was supposed to be Kufa? Mm. Will she survive the journey? Or do I leave her with the certain women who also can't be able to travel? And what will before my daughter Fatima? Because mm. he had a daughter called Fatima and uh, it was alluded or she's known as Fatima al Alila. And Fatima al Alila is, is basically Alila means the sick one or the ill mm. um, one or the one who has uh, an illness. And it's, it's a tragedy in itself that we're talking about a decision of a father having to leave a daughter for a journey. And we, we see all the time when parents, especially fathers, when they leave a daughter to go on a business trip for two, three days, mm. it's picture on the phone keep it closed, get one printed, get one on the key ring. You're constantly worried, constantly worried. Call home, how is she? Is she and this is when they're well. Mm. Is she okay? What's the situation? Give me an update. Now you can send a pic. Yet wow. this is Imam Hussain seeing a mission, knowing what's about to come, looking after those that were with him, yet now having to say goodbye to a daughter, knowing that there's absolutely no chance of him returning. And he has to express this in some sort of way. He has to come and find the strength to say, actually, I will leave you behind. And I will go and conduct my mission. And I will fully submit. And this is, this is the understanding. The only way Abba Abdullah was able to complete this mission was through 
complete and utter submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly. Leaving a daughter who's in this state, not knowing what the update would be on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. And I just question when I think to Sayyidah Ruqayya and that final embrace when Imam Hussein went out and we have so many poets that describe when she held onto the, the leg of the horse yeah. crying, don't go, I know those who go to the battlefield won't return, my uncle Abbas went, don't return. Yeah. What was the reaction of Fatima al-Adila yeah. when Imam Hussein started to say his goodbye at this point? Yeah, I mean, even just, it could have been a basic conversation but that rips the heart. It could have been, look, Father, what's going on? Mm. Why, why aren't you taking me with you? Or, you know, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's always a soft spot for this, especially those who have children. They'll, they'll understand that, like, leaving a child, even if you want to go to work um, and, and come back, you're, always, you're missing a child. So if you're going, as you were saying, if you're going for a long while and, and the kid or the young child comes and says, Look, is it, are you not taking me because I've done something wrong? Mm. Or I, you know, is it's this innocence? It's, it's innocence. innocence. It's, it's pure innocence. And and you're absolutely right that this is the total submission and the patience to be able to deal. Look, this I have a mission, mm. and and no matter what what emotions tug at my heartstrings, I have to be I have to be strong here. Mm. Um, so just just that conversation. But it's it's always an area where. A lot of the viewers can connect, and because the the ethos of these shows is for you to connect to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you this is this is an area where a lot of uh, the population, the Shia population, or even the Muslim world, can connect to the tragedy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi because it's a daughter, a, ma a father and daughter, or even a, a young girl who wants to connect to her father. There's so many correlations that you can make, uh, and the poem written by Nur Sadar literally says, you know, before the world takes my soul, just one time. Please come to me. Mm. Before I fade to my death, in my dreams, please visit me. Don't let me cry before I die. And this is a, a conversation that she's having with herself after Imam Hussein has, uh, Imam Hussein has, Imam Hussein has left. Before, before the world takes, takes my soul, soul just, just one, one time, time please come, come to me. Before, before I fade to my death, in my dreams, please visit me. Don't let me cry before I die. I have aged yet so terribly without my father by my side. I was raised but in a shadow. I slept in all the tears I cried. My days were without end or hope Only in nights did I abide For it would reflect my sorrow Even my tears, they had no guide Who would come and take my hand And show the whole world to me A father comforts his child but the night comforted me So tell me why Before I die I watched you leave our humble home And by our door waiting I stood But no one came back to raise me And my heart never understood did you think I'd cause you trouble? Did you think I'd cause you trouble? Oh Father, by God I couldn't. I was raised by, I was raised as my mother taught. Every morning kiss you I would. We place your prayer mat by you Every morning I'd come to you In my nights you'd come to me The last thing I saw was you Love can't deny Before I die Every night when lonely I slept In my dreams I would see your face I'd ask you, Father, please come back by your daughter's side is your place. 
Once lived by me, pride and honor. Now sorrow becomes my disgrace when the world has its eye on me. And with doubt my whole heart is laced. Sorrow became my own friend. It replaced you, oh Father. And so when I meet my end, it shall be my grave digger. And would I lie before I die? When the world has its grip on me, I did not know to who I turn. In every path this life took me, still for my father I would yearn. I gave men's tears a new meaning from my own tears. Sorrow would learn. I was surrounded by my doubt. I slept on worry and concern. I slept hoping, O oh Father, that soon you'd return to me. Like the rib of your mother, a broken heart sat on me. Patience is shy before I die, before the world takes my soul. Just one time, please come to me Before I fade to my death In my dreams, please visit me Don't let me cry before I die Many thanks to the poet Nuri And with that, we come to an end for this first night show and as mentioned, our aim is to help you to connect to this message of Aba Abdullah. Let it be something that reforms you, that isn't just tears, but turns into actions. That is something that you can graduate from this school and university off the day of Ashura, off the lamentations of Imam Al Hussein, inshallah. So join us every single night for this. We ask Allah to accept our efforts and we ask Allah to send our condolences to our dear awaited Savior. And may we receive the intercession of Aba Abdullah in this life and inshallah in the hereafter. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.